Welcome to the third episode of the ukulele bass build. On this episode, I'll show you the process behind the neck. So I started by planing this piece of mahogany with my new low-angle jack plane. I think I'm getting addicted to using hand tools these days. I made a paper template for the neck and used it to trace the wood to cut. Here I'm having a hard time using this underpowered bandsaw, so please don't mind the weird movements and sounds as it is always wanting to stop the motor. I checked it for flatness and confirmed that the angle of 13 degrees was consistent. It doesn't matter too much if you choose a 10 degree angle or 12 or 13, I guess it will work just fine using some angle between 10 and 15. I then worked on the underside of the headstock and neck. The area closer to the body of the base needs to be way thicker, so I had to glue a block after properly flattening both surfaces. To make the fretboard, I used some yellow wood that seems to be rather hard and stable. I used an online calculator to know the exact spacings between the frets and sent the drawing to my x carve to mark the correct places. I chose the same scale length that the Kali U base has displayed on their website. I talked about this in the beginning of the first episode. Once the glue was dry, I could shape the neck a little closer to the final proportions. The mahogany piece I utilized to cut the neck from wasn't as thick as it should have been, so the headstock became slightly short and too thin. So I decided to add two layers of thin maple and paduk that also gives it a nicer visual interest. That's why I needed to create nice and flat areas to effectively glue the other two thin wood pieces. Here I was making the tannin to connect the neck to the body of the instrument.
I did what I could to make it fit, but I wasn't happy with it, so I gave up on that and cut the tenon off. I thought I could get more reliability making it with the machine, so I cut a mortise on the router table using a 3 quarter inch router bit. I made several shallow passes to make sure I had total control. I then prepared some stock for the tenon and glued it in place. Now I can glue the thin layers I was talking before to make the headstock thicker and I can tell you right away that it did become too thick in the end and the machine heads couldn't fit properly but I found a solution of course. If you remember the first episode, the neck block has a hole drilled to receive a bolt and so I need to prepare the other side to later receive that bolt as well. I used the bread point bit to make a mark on the center of the hole and attach the threaded insert nut. To glue the fretboard to the neck, I mixed some epoxy and clamped everything tight just before going ahead and start to organically shape the underside of the neck. I cut the X's and defined the headstock shape. There is still too much material on this area and the more you leave here, the harder it will be to get the hand around the end of the fretboard. But at the same time you need to have enough material so the structural integrity doesn't get compromised. This section is all about refining the neck shape and having fun using hand tools. To make the fretboard curvature, I used a thin bendable piece of MDF with sandpaper glued to it. what it looked like attached to the body and made sure it was aligned and centered. Thank you. 
I traced some reference lines and went to town with my spokeshave. It was actually the first time I used a spokeshave on a project, I think. It was finally starting to look like a string instrument neck. Headstocks typically have some logo, initials or any kind of design inlaid with a contrasting wood or a material and so I wanted to make something simple as well. I told my sister to give it some thought while I kept working on the build because I also had the idea of having a complimentary Get Hand Story logo. So she came up with this design inspired on the original intro from this channel. So if you follow me since the beginning you'll probably remember this. So I just took my little hand and made a simpler version of it for the inlay. It didn't really go all the way through so I sanded it a little bit until the tiny hand got released. Here I was making the heel cap.
I could finally glue the top layer of the headstock. for this one guys and I hope you are enjoying to watch all this process and hopefully you can get some inspiration and learn some new things from my experience. I did learn quite a lot of things during the three months while building this awesome instrument. I want to thank all my Patreon supporters and Inventables for supporting what I do and thanks everyone else for watching. You should now go ahead and get your hands dirty.